in the field of embryology, there were a group of Arab students who collected all the matter in the Holy Quran dealing with embryology and they followed the guidance of the Holy Quran in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse 59, which says, if you are in doubt, ask the person who knows, ask the person who is knowledgeable. So they took all these data given in the Holy Quran, dealing with embryology, and presented it to Prophet Keith Moore. Prophet Keith Moore is the head and chairman of the Department of Anatomy in the University of Toronto in Canada, and is one of the leading authorities in the world in the field of embryology. When Professor Keith Moore went through the translation of the various verses of the Quran dealing with embryology, he said that most of the thing which the Quran speaks about embryology is matching with the latest discoveries made in the field of embryology. But there are a couple of things which I cannot say that they are right. Neither can I say that they are wrong because I myself not know about it. And one such verse was from Surah Ikra or Surah Alaq, chapter 96, verse number 1 and 2, which says, Ikra bismi khalaq, khalakal insana min alaq. Read, recite, or proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created, who created the human beings from something which clings, a leech like substance. So Prophet Keith Moore said, I do not know whether the embryo looks like a leech or not. So he went in his laboratory and under a very powerful microscope examined the shape of the early stage of embryo and compared it with a photograph of a leech. And he was astonished at the striking resemblance. And when he was asked about 80 questions on embryology taken from the Holy Quran and Hadith, he said, that if you would have asked me all these things 30 years ago, I would not be able to answer more than 50% of this. Because embryology, the development of embryology, is just recently, hardly 30 to 50 years, it's advanced. And Professor Keith Moore, he has written a book, The Developing Human. And in his new edition, the third edition, he has incorporated the new things which he found from the Quran and the Hadith for which he got an award for the best medical book written in that year by any single author. And when I was doing my MBBS in the first year, we referred to this book, Developing Human by Keith Moore. If you wanted to score high marks in embryology, we referred to the book by Keith Moore. If you wanted to get just passing mark, we referred to Inderbir Singh. But if you wanted to score, we had to refer to the book by Prof. Keith Moore. And later on, this book was translated into several languages of the world. Prophet Keith Moore said, I have got no objection in accepting that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God Almighty. And that the Holy Quran has to be a divine revelation. The Holy Quran says in Surah Tariq, chapter 86, verse number 5 to 7, let no man think from what he's created. He's created from a drop, emitted from a space between the backbone and the ribs. Today we have come to know the genital organs, the testes in the males and the ovaries in the female. In the embryonic age, they develop from a space where the kidney is present today, between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. Later on, the testes, the descent, to the inguinal colon, into the scrotum, and the ovaries in the female to the true pelvis. But in the embryonic age, it's in the space where the Quran speaks about, between the backbone, the spinal column, and the 11th and 12th rib. Even in the adult life, after the genital organs, the descent, yet they receive the blood supply, the nerve supply, and the lymphatic drainage from the same space between the spinal column and the 11th and 12th rib. The Holy Quran mentions in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 13, as well as in Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 5, that we have created the human beings from Anutfa. 
the Arabic word nutfa, that the human beings have been created from nutfa, is mentioned in the Quran no less than 11 times. And the word nutfa is mentioned 12 times. But human beings created from nutfa is mentioned 11 times. The Arabic word nutfa means a minute quantity of liquid. The Holy Quran says in Surah Sajda, chapter 32, verse number 8, that we have created the human beings from a quintessence of liquid. The Arabic word is sulala, meaning a minute quantity or the best part of the whole. And today we have come to know only one sperm actually it penetrates the ovum. And only one sperm is required to fertilize the ovum out of the tens of millions of sperms which the man ejaculates. Quran refers to it as sulala, the best part of the whole, or nutfa, a minute quantity. The Quran says in Surah Insan, chapter 76, verse number 2, Inna khalaknal insana min nutfatin amshaj. The Arabic word means, not for the namshaj, means we have created the human being from a minute quantity of mingled fluids. Not for the namshaj. Minute quantity of mingled fluid. This can refer to the male and female gametes after they form the zygote. It yet remains a nutfa, a minute quantity of liquid. It can also refer to the spermatic fluid which contains several secretions from various glands, like the testes, the serofluid, which contains the spermatozoons. It also includes the secretion from the seminal vesicles, the seminal fluids, which is a reservoir of spermatozoons, but does not contain the fertilizing agent. Also, it refers to the secretion of the prostatic glands, which gives the creamy texture and the characteristic odor to the sperm as well as glands attached to the urinary tract, the Cooper's gland or the Litter's gland, which gives the specific texture of mucus to the sperm. The Quran refers to as Nutfatin Amshaj, minute quantity of mingled fluid, male and female gametes surrounded by these fluids, which are responsible for the birth of the human being. The Holy Quran says in Surah Al-Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 6, We have created the human beings in the wombs of their mother, in stages, one after the other, in three waves of darkness. Professor Keith Moore said, These three waves of darkness refers to the anterior abdominal wall of the mother, the uterine wall, and the amniocorionic membrane.